This over here is a stage 3 Audi RS6. Now this will probably give you 2 to 3 kmpl and if you want to drive this on the weekends you need to offset with something fuel economical and practical for the city something like this this is a tata altros 1.5 diesel and this is one of the most practical and fuel efficient diesel cars you can get in the hatchback segment and i'm going to tell you all about this car today The Altros is the second product from Tata Motors to feature the company's Impact 2.0 design language. The first product featuring this was the Harrier SUV. The Altros looked sharper, aggressive and more premium when compared to its rivals in the segment. Design-wise, everything fits well and some features really stand out like the ORVMs, the wheels and the contrast black paint. But there is still room for improvement. I know this thing looks very slick and especially in this bright red color, it looks like a very premium car. But all of these piano black elements that you see, well, they get easily scratched up, even easier than the paint and it's very visible. Now, especially over here, where you're going to be putting your hand quite a lot, this piano black element which makes the car look nice and low and makes it look very sporty, well, it's going to get scratched up very easily. Uh, apart from that, come over here to the back and you see these flush door handles. Well, it might look cool that you don't have a door handle over here, but it's not the easiest to use. And if you have some person who's not really aware of how to open the door handle, they're just going to be looking everywhere apart from this place. Little bit of a problem, but can be easily overlooked, especially because this thing looks stunning in its segment. It, does, it hasn't created any sort of controversy like the Hyundai i20. That's because it just looks so good. Hop into the driver's seat and the Altros has a very young and modern looking dashboard. You have this floating 7-inch Harman infotainment system. Now the UI in the Harman system isn't the most intuitive. It's very laggy and it's a little difficult to navigate through. But if you overlook that, it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which you are going to be using almost 99% of the time. So the UI itself doesn't really matter. But what is more impressive are the speakers that are connected to the system. They're very impressive and I think best in class. The Steering is a nice flat bottom steering wheel, three spokes. On the left hand side you have your volume and infotainment media buttons. On the left you have your cruise control and other buttons. The instrument cluster also tries to keep up with the times with half of it being digital and half of it being analog. Your speedometer is analog and everything apart from that is digital. Now I would like to say that the instrument cluster's uh, display is actually more brighter and more crisper than the infotainment system's display and that's a bit weird. Apart from that, it's a very nice place to be. The seats are very nice, comfortable, big seats, good amount of cushioning and it has some really quirky features up in front. For example, the horn, you can access it from over here, like on the side, you don't have to press in the middle. You have all of your AC controls over here, which are buttons and not some stupid sliding thing or some touch screen like that. So very easy to use. You have some of your uh, infotainment buttons over here, shortcuts like home, next track, back and all of that stuff. And some other cool things is that uh, Tata loved to market that this thing has 90 degree opening doors. So yeah, getting in and out of this car is not an issue. When it comes to all of the space inside the cabin, well, you have a hole over here to keep some stuff. You have some place over here to keep your phone. You have bottle holders over here in the middle which can't really keep anything to be very honest. And you have some space over here as well. It is practical but it could have been better. Now jumping in from the front seat to the back seat, you'll be surprised as to how much space is over here in the back. Now yes, the seating position is quite upright. It's not a sedan but you have good amounts of legroom, you have good amounts of headroom in fact quite a lot of it and yeah it's a comfortable place you have big windows and you have a central armrest over here in the middle as well no cup holders and no ski hatch as well you have some bottle holders over here in the door card but again you won't be able to fit any big one liter bottles over here and you have some space over here in the back seat 
You also have a 12 volt, uh, 12 volt socket to charge your phone, or if you want to add some sort of a device over here in the back, and you also have some AC vents over here in the middle so that the rear passenger also gets some sort of ventilation. But let's get on to the driving and see how the Altros is as a driving machine. So let's get on to the Tata Altros's driving dynamics. Well, this car is based on Tata's Alpha Arc platform and it's a brand new platform. And that platform is basically trying to deliver the best of both worlds, comfort and good driving dynamics. Well, does it fulfill those expectations? In some way, yes it does because the thing is, the Altros is one of the most, if not the most comfortable hatchback in the segment. It definitely is like the Rolls Royce of the hatchback segment that it competes in. That's how comfortable we think the Altros is. And that is the same experience shared both with the iTurbo that we got a few months ago and this Altros 1.5 diesel. And both of those cars are basically identical in terms of chassis, suspension and everything. So regardless of which Al uh, Altros you get, you're going to get this comfortable ride. So what happens when you start attacking some corners? Well, let's get one thing straight. The Altros is not a performance car by any means. So don't think of it as some sort of nippy little hatchback that you'll have tons of fun with in the guts. But definitely the Altros has some good driving dynamics. Yes, it has quite a lot of body roll, but it can attack those corners at some decent pace. The main limiting factor with our experience in the ghats with this particular car were definitely the tyres that it has. Not the grippiest and even at 50-60 km uh, kilometers an hour, they were making quite a lot of uh, tyre squeal. So that is a bit of a downside. So definitely don't use these particular tyres, get a grippier set of tyres. Now, talking about other stuff related to the driving, like the engine for example, the engine's pretty good. Uh, I was getting consistently 16 kmpl regardless of how I was driving, let it be the city, if I was thrashing the car and once you get onto the highway with cruise control on, you can easily touch the 20 kmpl mark. Then comes the power of the 1.5 litre diesel that this thing has. Uh, it has quite a lot of turbo lag but once you get into its boost range, it is quite a nippy little engine. You can definitely perform some overtakes but the limiting factor again for this engine is the gearbox and the throttle pedal that it's connected to. First of all, the clutch is pretty much, it doesn't have any sort of feel. When you're trying to pick up the car in first gear, you don't understand what's going on. And once you start giving throttle, you'll also understand the throttle pedal is also dead because there is easily a two second delay. Let me show you an example. Now check this out. Now I'm going to start the car and I'm going to show you the amount of throttle delay that this thing has. So car is now on. Currently it's in city driving mode and look at this. I'm pressing my foot down completely. That's how much time that this thing needs to basically accelerate. That's how dead the throttle pedal is. Tata, you definitely have to do something about this. And the worst part is that example was done in city driving mode. This thing has an eco driving mode and in that mode, the throttle pedal is non-existent. That's how much of a delay there is between the throttle pedal and the engine revving. And that is frankly not very intuitive. If you can look over all of these small little niggles here and there, the Altos 1.5 diesel is a very nice car to own as a normal in middle class Indian family. It has all of the features that you could want. Now yes, of course, some little niggles here and there, like the throttle pedal issue, like the clutch issue that I was just telling you, and like the driving mode not being that effective. Yes, those are there. And of course, the Harman infotainment system not being the easiest of systems to use. Apart from those, of things, the Altros is a perfectly fine hatchback for you to own in a country like India. Moreover, good ground clearance and a very comfortable ride. Those are the two main things along with the fuel economy that this thing can give you is a win-win situation for any sort of person trying to buy this car. Now in this review, we have highlighted all of the various different observations with our one week with the Altros diesel. Now some of these problems, especially the mechanical ones, may be related to the harsh use that these media cars go through, but nonetheless, the Altros diesel is a perfectly good car for any sort of Indian family. 
It is definitely the most comfortable out of the bunch, looks the part, has tons of space, is fuel efficient and is cheaper than its direct premium hatch rival, the i20 by a fair margin. The Altros is genuinely the best hatchback Tata has ever made bar the original Indica as it was a revolutionary product for the brand. So if you're looking for a spacious, economical and comfortable hatchback around the 10 lakh rupee mark, the Altros is the perfect fit for you.